Hello YouTube. It's been a while since I haven't posted something on YouTube because I was quite busy with uh, other projects and also I made a Facebook page and most of my content was quite short and in my native language which is Romanian. But uh, now I consider that uh, I'm working on a project that might interest that might be interesting for other people too, so I just wanted to share it with you. So, um, as you may have seen in other videos, I have a 4-axis on my milling machine, but uh, that axis, it's a... Uh, I mean, that 4-axis is, uh, is basically a rotary head, a dividing table, which has a worm gear and Normally it has backlash. It was not designed for that. And I always hunted a harmonic drive or an epicycloidal drive on um, on eBay, on um, stuff that sells something like this second. Also I looked on AliExpress but they, they're quite expensive. And at some point I, I bought, I mean I found um, epicycloidal drive from a KUKA robot from somebody who was servicing KUKA robots and using that uh, harmonic drive I mean that epicycloidal drive I'm gonna make my uh, fourth axis without backlash and much much stiffer and I'm gonna walk you through explaining the hardware that I got and how I'm gonna do that Next I'm going to show you the harmonic drive, the epicycloidal drive actually that I bought. I keep saying harmonic drive because that's the most common um, term used for this, but actually there are two, te two kind of technologies, different technologies. And this is, I mean, the epicycloidal drive, it's a bit more performant compared to harmonic drive. And it happened that I got that one. Okay, so this is the drive. It comes from a KUKA robot, KR4 robot. It's the third joint of that robot. And uh, basically, you spin this shaft, this inside shaft, and uh, if you can see, this is turning slowly. It has a ratio of 90 to 1 and lots of torque. On the datasheet spec, all the stiffness ratings are in kilonewtons, so it should be very stiff compared to what I have now. And the problem here was how to drive this. Initially, I mean, I, I will spin this with uh, clear path motor that I got last time when I was in the US. It's a NEMA 34 size motor. And initially I thought I'm gonna couple this like this. But uh, the shaft of this NEMA 34 motor is 12.7 millimeters, which is half an inch. But the inside of this line, it's only 12.4 millimeters. So initially I thought I'm gonna wire the end cut this uh, to 12.7 mm millimeters and cut a keyway in, in this. But uh, it was quite difficult because I couldn't find a way to seal this so that it so that the water does not get into it and the water with the metal molecules that metal particles that are being removed it's, it's quite difficult in it's, it's quite tricky if it's gonna get inside so uh, in order to avoid that another idea was to cut a spline shaft for this so what I did Using a 40 millimeters, 14 millimeters uh, steel shaft, I cut these splines uh, on the rotary table that I on the fourth axis that I already had, the one that has backlash, and this fits perfectly here. So basically, I'm able to couple this, and here I have uh, this is threaded on the other end and I'll be able to screw this from here and basically fix them in place so that they won't have any play. Okay, and now <clears throat> I'm gonna have to order a coupling 
and I'm gonna attach this to with a coupling like this. This will be shorter a bit. And now I'm gonna show you how I've made the CAD design for this. Here is how, how I imagine the vortex is based on the harmonic drive slash epigee label drive. First I've modeled the drive one to one so it has exactly the same holes and dimensions as the real one. Then I will add the spline shaft, the one that will turn the input. And now we're going to attach a coupling. This coupling is just for, I don't know, modeling purposes. I'm going to see what I can find on the local stores. Okay, now that we have this, we can attach the steel base. This is the steel base. It's gonna be it's gonna be made of C45 steel, 85 millimeters, 80 millimeters thick. So this is 80 millimeters. And uh, if we look in section for this, we can see how this is uh, this goes inside. Probably here I will consider adding some um, ceiling, some. Uh, isolation so that initially the drive was filled by oil but I'm planning to run it without oil okay and now if we close the analysis I will add next the slot plate this is gonna be bolted down with 18 screws to the harmonic drive and uh, in these slots, in these three slots, I will be able to attach a plate in order to get the chuck mounted, the three jaw chuck. This is 160 millimeters diameter and with a center height of 130 millimeters. And the width of this is 180 millimeters. Uh, next, we're going to attach the flange that will get the motor and the motor support. This is made for NEMA 34 clear pad size. Here I will get the motor, but I was unable to import it, import the model of the motor. So I just left a blank part there. And this is going to be a sheet metal cover that will protect the motor and the cables. Okay, next, in order to clamp this to the table, I decided to clamp it from the behind, from the back. And this is okay because actually it's on the center of rotation. And on the front, in order to be compatible with other sizes of tables, um, I decided to add the clamp. So this, I mean, if I want at some point to move this on a different milling machine, I can just machine these parts and basically I can attach it to another milling machine without being concerned that the holes won't match the new, the new machine. Okay, and in order to keep, in order to help with the alignment on this on the table, I have already added an alignment piece. This is the alignment piece that will get into the slots of the table. Thank you.